Welcome to chapter five. Uh, chapter five, we're going to talk about cultural influences and how that affects us as sports marketers. There's a video uh, I'd like for you to watch. Uh, to, it's also attached in this section. Uh, it was something I mentioned in the last chapter um, about uh, culture and the influence sport has uh, and how politics are involved in that as well uh, in Eastern Germany. Uh, and so it's a, it's a good video to watch to kind of see um, this idea of culture and the influence it has on us. But uh, after you watch that, obviously, um, you can move on to the next section. But let's go ahead and get into this chapter, um, starting first with an introduction. So one of the most important things uh, for us as marketers to do is to understand different cultures. And the reason for that is basically twofold. One, uh, so as we as marketers, as, as uh, people in general, can celebrate the differences and build one another up. And so many times you see in the media and so many times you see uh, in our society, uh, people who are different and therefore you put the other person down for being different. Uh, if we can understand as marketers that differences actually build our ability to market our products as well as make our culture a better place. Uh, and just because somebody's different than you doesn't mean that, that uh, you should treat them in any different uh, other than to learn from them. Uh, and so if we can understand people and how the differences between them, we can then better create products that meet consumers' desires and needs and therefore fulfill purposes within our life. But uh, the second reason why it's under important to understand differences is that it increases our knowledge about cultural rituals and, and our ability to understand any unwarranted misconceptions. So, for example, uh, in the World Cup, every team has a different style of play. However, everyone is trying to see that achieve the same thing and that is a win and so regardless of how you get to the point everybody's trying to lead a happy and healthy life uh, and uh, we as marketers can and should uh, take a role in providing products that uh, make that life happier and healthier healthier uh, and understanding cultural differences as we do that and so uh, developing an understanding for global cultures gives us as sports marketers the ability to become more effective in a term that's very popular in marketing literature and something you'll likely uh, engage in as a career if you have any marketing aspects at all or work for a company at all and that is known as uh, relationship marketing. Relationship marketing is defined as an ongoing cooperative behavior between the marketer and the consumer and in order to build a relationship we have to understand global uh, cultural differences uh, and learn and respect and learn from those uh, different cultures. So uh, sports organizations use several different mechanisms to help bolster relationships, which comes from this relationship marketing idea. Uh, the first one is to interact with fans about the sport, uh, have conversations both in person, face to face, over the phone, and through other forms of media such as email and uh, video broadcast and chat rooms and blogosphere and all these types of things. Uh, hospitality is also something that uh, we use as a mechanism to help bolster relationships. Uh, inviting those season ticket holders or loyal fans to uh, meet and greets with players. Uh, and the third one is, is gift giving. Uh, and all of these things, and the key to all of this slide, the reason I brought this up, is that we have to understand that there's differences in cultures. And a good example of this is understanding gift giving. So culture is different in terms of the manner in which uh, gift, in terms of the manner of gift uh, giving gifts. But sports related gifts can reward fans, establish an identity for fans, and express uh, a value or share values. In other words, giving gifts has different meanings to different cultures. However, sports at times can transcend cultural bound, uh, differences and um, different bound, transcend boundaries and break down walls. In a lot of ways, uh, this is one way sport can get its foot in the door. And so maintaining good relationships with sports consumers can also uh, effectively keep away or cut out and reduce corfing. Now, if you've been in one of my other sports marketing classes, you've probably heard the term uh, corfing and burfing. Uh, it is an ap acronym, uh, essentially, in how we understand consumers develop a social identity. So the key to this idea is that we as consumers create a social identity, and oftentimes that is through our sport consumption. And so corfing stands for cutting off reflective failure. Sometimes you'll see it read casting off reflective failure. Either way, corfing is the they phenomenon. Essentially, my reflective failure, in other words, if a team loses, I want to disassociate myself with that team if I'm going to corf. Uh, what we are trying to do as marketers is to get people to uh, basically, in spite of reflective failure, we're going to 
celebrate our, our loss. And in other words, I'm a loyal fan even though we lose. If you start to see people corf, you also know them as uh, bandwagon fans. Uh, once they start losing, they uh, don't really care about the team. Uh, it's essentially the individual increase uh, increases their distance between themselves and the unsuccessful group or team in order to protect their own self-esteem. It's the they phenomenon. They lost. They did terrible. As opposed to the we phenomenon, which is burging, where we won, we did great, and that is basking in reflective glory. In other words, I had nothing to do with the win. I'm just a fan. I'm just watching the game at home. But I'm going to associate myself with that identity of a winning team. That is burping. And so by maintaining good relationships with our sports consumers, again, the relationship marketing aspect, which comes from understanding cultures, is an effective way to eliminate or reduce corporate. And so what we're going to talk about over the next several videos, as well as this one, uh, is several things. Culture, what is it? Uh, understand the, the importance of understanding uh, open-mindedness. Uh, we'll talk about cultural barriers and differences. Uh, and then also cultural models. So how do we understand different cultures from a uh, conceptual standpoint? So let's start with what is culture? Well, culture is defined, and it's in your book, uh, page 68. It says, integrated system of learned behaviors, behavioral patterns uh, that are characteristic of members of any given society. In other words, uh, it is, and I like this definition a little bit better, uh, it is the shared ways of life and shared understanding that people develop as they live together. And so if we look at uh, different types of um, culture and how we understand culture, we can look at it in different ways. Somebody can be in a geographical region uh, and have a culture. Good example is Texas, right? Texas is its own culture. Uh, people are proud to be from Texas. Uh, when I traveled Europe all the time, people will ask where I'm from. I'll say the United States. And they'll go, oh, that's great where? And I'll say Texas. So they'll go, oh, Texas, that's really neat. Um, and so... And there are certain characteristics that come to mind when they think. Uh, you can think of the, the Northwest versus the South, right? There are cultural differences in that, and they should be celebrated. Those differences should be. Uh, you could say ethnically there are cultural differences uh, between the race in which you are born and identify as. Uh, same thing in your age. So those that are millennials versus Generation X versus baby boomers. There are certain cultural differences that we can tell, uh, differences between these people. And each of these ways that we focus on, we should understand the differences and similarities because it impacts their sport participation and their viewership. And now we can also say we can't generalize a single person into a culture based on these uh, areas. So I can put somebody in Texas, but not say that they have the same culture of somebody in Texas. I can say somebody is millennial, but that doesn't necessarily mean they have the same millennial attributes or the same be true for baby boomers. There are other aspects in how we segment consumers, and we're not going to talk too much about that today, but cultural differences um, should be understand that they are shared values and belief systems that come from living with other people similar to yourselves. 